All right, class. <laughs> All right, let's continue off where we left off last time. Can you guys be quiet, please? Antonio, come sit over here. Come sit over here. Come sit over here, please. All right, I have my two. Let's see, who else do I need to move? All right, I remember I wrapped my piece twice. And I can feel that it's still, the clay's still soft. So that's good. Oh, wait, wait. This is the one I did this morning. So, hopefully, hopefully my one that I actually did last week is fine. All right. So, last time I made the cylinder, the handle, and the bottom, and if you remember, I, since you're going to be gone for so long, I put, go ahead, Georgina, go ahead and put your phone away, please. And so here we go. Get this stuff out of the way. I'm going to be working really fast, uh, but when you do yours, spend more time on it so you do a better job. I'm looking forward to the mugs that I use as an example. Maybe it'll, I'll get it in a second. But the first thing you can do is take out the newspaper. Antonio, I told you to sit over there. All right, so again... Here's my handle, the cylinder, and the bottom. I'm going to carefully uh, take this off. And it's it's uh, pretty somewhat firm, but it's still pretty fragile. So uh, be gentle when you handle this. I'll put this off to the side. And uh, the little pieces of tape stuck in there too. So I'll get a needle and lightly lift those out. Again, take your time. I just stabbed it without intentionally stabbing it. Got one piece of tape, but we'll smooth it out also. And lift this up too. All right, so I got my newspaper and my tape out. Then we're gonna repair this inside. And I happen to have some clay out here that I used this morning. It's a little bit dry but I'll just get some of the moist, more moist part. Oh, let me just go get more. And there may be half a, less than half a chunk of clay. Well, this is about all the clay. I'll probably need even less than this. Emilio, come sit over here. Where? Right here. Nah. Come sit over here. Nah. Do I have to write you up? Just for not sitting down? Come sit. Come sit over here. Then I won't have to write you up. It's really simple. Can you close the door? All right. All right, so um, I got the clay because going to uh, repair that seam on the inside. I probably can't see it, but remember when we put the clay together? I didn't repair the inside, so I'm going to do that now. And I'm going to start by just getting a little bit of clay and rolling a really thin... You can sit back a little bit. Now. Right up. <laughs> then let me roll out a really thin thin coil to put on there. So again, when you do this, take your time. OK. 
Okay, we've got a really thin coil ready. It's not perfect, but in the interest of time. Uh, this time the clay isn't so soft, so I do need to score it. And score it all the way down. So I've scored it all the way down. Then I'll get some slip. Let me, I can use the knife too. All right, here's the slip. And I wanna make sure I put slip into the scoring marks because if you don't, you'll actually be introducing an air bubble. And it's pretty common, especially when people, students attach the handle that they don't, that they put an air bubble in there. Go and put your phones away. Thank you. And uh, so get some slip in those scoring marks so you don't introduce an air bubble. Then I'm gonna put my coil in there right over the, the seam that I just uh, scored and slipped. And I'm gonna blend that in. Again, be, be gentle. Even though it's been so long, this stayed pretty moist. And I'll just pinch off the extra. Then I'm gonna just blend this down. Again, when you do it, take your time and do a good job. Blend it uh, really well if you can get the blue, the blue ribbon there to help smooth it. That's good too. I'm using like the round part of the blue rib and the, there's like a side that's more curved and I'm using the curved part to help blend that down. Okay, so do a better job with that. Make it nice and smooth. Then, once you have that smoother than this, so you take your time on there, go ahead and get your, the bottom. Let me move the this handle off to the side. It's not coming off so well. Just kind of slice it. Hopefully I still have enough for the bottom. And I'll put the bottom on there. I'm going to use the needle, just trace the outside and inside, just to show where I need to score. Trace the outside, make a mark, trace the inside. And Lift this off. You can see I can see where the outside and inside are, so I know where to score. I'll take my fork. Let's put this over here. Take my fork and do my scoring again. Take your time with this. Don't rush like I am here. Uh, Karina, can you hand this to Karina? All right, I'm scoring. And then I also need to score this part too. Um, I'm going to This part especially will be really hard to reach once you close it off. But score the both pieces, score the bottom slab and near the bottom of your cylinder. Then get some nice thick slip and fill in those scoring marks. Dominic, what can happen if you don't put slip into the scoring mark? Uh, no. What's that, Adi? No, I don't know. You don't know? That's a good question. I don't know. 
Anyone over there? Andres? What happens if you don't put this thick slip into the scoring marks like this? You don't know. Anyone? It's not going to stay on? Well, maybe it might stay on, but what can you introduce if you don't? Yes, an air bubble. Thank you. So that's why we want to put a nice thick slip into the scoring. I don't want to put that down like that, so I'm going to put it up there. Put some slip here. I don't think I'm going to keep this, um, this mug right here because I don't know if I'm doing a very good job showing you this rush job. Let me show you in case you guys can't see. Uh, and if you put a little bit too much, that's fine. If you put a lot too much, that's also fine. You'll just have more to clean up later, but it's always better to put a little bit too much than too little. And Okay, I got my slip on both, I've scored both pieces. I put my slip on both pieces, then Put it on there and then kind of wiggle it to make sure those scoring marks like interlink with each other. Michael, put that phone away. All right, push down and wiggle. Okay, then I'm going to take off excess slip out here. And I'm gonna uh, get my needle tool and I'll be using this to cut off, to trim off the excess. And uh, I'm not gonna go through all in one pass. I'm going to just uh, make as many passes. I'm just giving moderate pressure. I'm gonna take as many passes as I need to get through. And I think the needle is easier to use than the knife because it's easier to, the knife's good for straight cuts and the needle's better for more curved cuts. Oops. I'm almost going through. Don't push too hard, especially on the canvas. You don't want to tear the canvas. Went through a little bit. Yeah, I can feel I'm slightly going through. All right, let's put this off to be recycled later. Then um, I still need to clean up this area here and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. I'm gonna take some of my new clay again and inside we have all that excess slip in there and that's good because uh, we're kind of, so it's attached now and it'll stay, but we want to talk about some like finer points of making uh, a mug. And if, if my, uh, the bottom, if the, if the wall comes and makes a really harsh joint for me for the camera right here, uh, that, that harsh joint, it's hard to wash in there and, you know, stuff can get caught in there so I want to make it kind of round if you look inside other mugs too it's it's not there's not a really sharp joint in there it's nice and rounded so that when you you can wash it like uh, coffee and stuff won't get caught in there and so to round that off I need to get a little piece of clay put this off to the side again and roll another really thin coil so I can put it in there and take up some room and round out the bottom part there. And if you need to do two parts, that's fine. It doesn't have to be one coil. Really thin. Maybe I'll do that. I'll just cut it in half there. And, and you won't be able to see it because it's so small in there, but I have the excess slip in there. I'm going to and also a reason why I didn't want you to use too small of a can 
so you can put your hand in there and push this clay down. And so when it comes time to wash it too, it's easier to wash if the can's bigger. So I've got this little, little coil. I'll actually cut this in half too and do several parts. And it's kind of hard to do. I'm gonna have to use a tool. But I'm pushing this really thin coil in where the bottom meets the side. Okay. And then I'm kind of just putting my finger around to blend it in and to take out some excess slip. And I'll still need more. Drop it in there. I think you guys get the point. Let me just get this clay in there. I can refine it. And it's better at this point to not put the handle on yet because this way you can still handle or still work with the cylinder and not worry about the handle getting bumped and falling off. So we're gonna do the handle later. Let's see if, I'm gonna look for the, the mug that I was thinking of before. I'm not seeing it. Oh, here's, here's one of them. So this one, uh, you know, the glaze job. Jordina, put the phone away, please. Uh, the student, the glaze job, I'm not gonna comment about that, but the, uh, this is part of the mug, it's called the lip, because that's where you put your lip against when you drink. So that it's called the lip of the mug. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of sharp here, which is more pleasant to drink from, a sharp lip or a rounded over lip? What do you think, Michael? What would you rather drink from a mug with that, that's really sharp here, where you put your mouth, or one that's smooth? Smooth, right? So you might think that um, it's easier to just push it down and smooth it out or round it over. But it's when you do that, you're just kind of pushing clay around and you're not really rounding it over so much. So the best way to round it over is to run the blade of the knife over that sharp part of the lip and, um, and remove that material to make it, to make it round. Okay, so do all that before you put your, your handle on. Do all your rounding over. I'm not gonna do it here, so it takes, but spend uh, as long as you need to get that done. And uh, this one's not gonna be complete. This one needs a lot of work. But let's say after you've done that, after, so uh, I don't know if I explained the inside completely. So I put that coil in there. Then you're gonna run your finger in there to push it in there and blend it in or use a tool. Do the same. But do blend that in there and remove excess slip. All right, there's still more to remove in there. It's best to do all this before you attach the handle. And out here, same thing. Drag that. If you need to repair any, any spots where it's not quite joined, the bottom isn't quite joined to the side, do that now. You can get some slip and uh, to moisten up the clay and then massage them together. Uh, do you think your parents at home would like a sharp bottom that touches the table or round it over? What do you think is better for your table? Sharp, you think it's better to put a sharp piece on the table and scratch the table? Or a rounded one where it's not gonna scratch? What do you think? 
It's better to scratch the table or not. No. Yes, yeah, be better. So what should I do? Round it, out. Round it over. Yeah, same way to get the knife. What do you mean more balance? It'll be unbalanced. Unbalanced? No, we're just taking off, rounding over the edge here. Taking off that material. So it'll still be fine, but it'll just will be rounded over so it won't scratch the table. Okay, so round over the lip, round over the bottom. After you've done that, then we can get to the handle. And uh, if you're, well, let's see, I'll separate that from the slab. Uh, do any repairs to your handle that you need to if anything cracked. Get some slip, massage that in, close up those cracks. And then once you have your handle here, I like to take my knife, make sure it's nice and clean so that I can run a nice, I'm not gonna cut the handle off, I'm just gonna um, make a nice clean cut in here so that it will we'll have an, a good, uh, good surface to join to the cylinder. So I just took off that much. See that, Jadine? All right, remember, I'm not, I'm not cutting it off at two points. It's not gonna be one of these mugs where it joins at two points. It's gonna be like this, where it joins it across the whole side. Then I'm gonna locate where a good place, and not often the place where I, I put those coils on that's often the strongest point. So I'll choose that as the spot to add my handle. I'm going to just set my handle where I want it to be. I'll make sure it's not too low. What will happen if I put the handle here? Emilio. Is it going to fall off or is, is, the, is the mug going to sit you right? Think you think it's fine? Well, you can experiment. <laughs> make your, mo your mom or your parents will wonder about you if you, you make a mug like that. But anyways, uh, make sure it's in a good spot. And uh, get your needle. Doing what? Score. Oh wait, I'm, you do need to score it before you slip it. But I'm using the needle just to mark where the handle is going to be. Just really lightly. So I don't think the camera can pick that up or if you can see, but there's just a really light lines where I'm gonna put the handle. Mm -hmm. And then what do we do next, Emilio? Score it. Score it, yeah. Score going that way. Score going this way. And Amelia, what do I need to make sure I don't introduce air bubbles into the you score? Put cement on these. Yeah, I need to fill them with with what? With cement? cement. <laughs> What's this called? The wet clay. <laughs> slip. Just put slip in those scoring marks. And slip in here. A little bit too much is better than too little. Make sure those scoring marks have slip in them. Then I'm gonna take both pieces. I'm gonna support it from the inside. Make sure I don't push it in too much when I push it together. And push together, wiggle it around. And just lightly take off the excess slip. Okay, I don't know up in there. Do any repairs that you need to. All right, any questions about this process? All right. All right, and then even after it dries, is it safe to hold it by the handle? 
No. At what point can I handle it by hold it by the handle? Anyone remember? Just when it dries, I can handle it then? No. I have to wait, or how about after it's been bisque fired? Can I handle, hold it by the handle after it's been bisque fired before I blaze it? No. At what point after what can I hold it by the handle? Yeah, after it's been glaze fired. All right. Any questions about any process? This one or the current be day before? All right. But again, uh, spend more, a lot more time on yours than I did here. Okay. Thank you.